<laughs> and uh, start again. So thank you very much to everybody for being here today. Thank you to Selene Young, Marco Minghini, and Adisa Kucci, who will be the speakers for today's conversation. Uh, I am really glad to welcome you to this eighth uh, seminar of the Cycle Distant Talk, PhD Behind the Scene, which uh, is a cycle of talks that we have organized with a group of colleagues of the PhD program in urban and regional development of the um, Politecnico di Torino. The idea of building up uh, this um, Sorry. This uh, cycle of conference was born since we wanted somehow to somehow to take advantage of this virtual world that we are living, we have been living for this year. And so we wanted to create opportunities to discuss and to interact and establish connection between the wider research community. Uh, we will see that community is going to be a really central word in today's conversation. And um, uh, but before starting, I must do some technical communication. First of all, and really important, today's talk will be recorded and will be uploaded in the YouTube channel of the East um, of the Department of the Regional and Development uh, PhD program. That is the YouTube channel, the YouTube link that you see on the chat. There you can find all the previous talk as well. Uh, if someone is not okay with this fact and uh, don't want his name or her name to be on the video or any other stuff, please contact me and we will take care of that. So we will probably doing a post editing or something like that. So this is the first one. Then second, I want to remind you about next week talk, which will be held by Lorenzo Mauloni, and that will talk about the, um, the problem of the informal housing, informal settlement, and the relationship with registration and law. The speaker will be Francesco Chiodelli from Università di Torino and Emiliano Esposito, with, uh, who is a PhD in, who holds a PhD in urban studies. Uh, and the title of the topic, the conversation is Come la legge plasma la città informale. Sorry for the international community. This time the conversation will be, that time the conversation will be in Italian. Uh, you can find all the information in the Polito news page, on the Facebook page where, uh, that I have put on the chat, or write directly to me and I can give you all the information about that. So as for today, uh, we will have two interesting con contributions from Selene Young and from Marco Minghini. And after that, we will have a really um, long, hope, hopefully long Q&A section where we can discuss about the topic and about the things that we, that we are going to hear from them. Uh, as I said before, today's topic is the community and the importance of the community in the OpenStreetMap project. Just as an introduction, and uh, just in case if someone of you don't know what OpenStreetMap is, uh, OpenStreetMap is a project created in 2004, which aim is to uh, create and distribute a free geographical data of the world. It is a map. Um, which is being totally built up by volunteers and which is distributed with an open content license, which means that under some circumstances that uh, <laughs> that um, are not the focus of today's conversation, all the data that are on the maps are free and are open to be used by all the people of the community and not community. So, however, uh, although OpenStreetMap project has gained a lot of importance in the past years, the, the fact is that the world is a very, very big place and that uh, there are a lot of things to be mapped. And that's why it is so important to have an active community uh, behind the project, mapping every day new places, new new places and new places around the world. And also this thing is particularly important because um, having an active community means to always have updated data and data that are quality checked. The fact is that data and geo, geo data are never neutral. And so uh, maps are, yes, the representation of space, but they can also be tool for action. They can be tools for, um, they can change the space around us, they can tie network and they can show 
spatial subjectivity. So they are powerful instrument and not only represent this, they don't only represent this space, but they also can shape this space. And the fact is that the people map what they are interested in. And so it is important to understand who are the people joining the community and how is the social composition of this community, because this will influence a lot the information that are contained on the map. But on this point, I will introduce my speakers that uh, I'm sure will be more prepared than me to talk about these things. Um, the first speaker will be Selene Young. She is a PhD candidate in the communication program of the Universidad Nacional de la Plata, and she is the co-founder of the, of the Jessica's project which is a global community of women, which aim is to close the gap in the participation, in the representation and in the role of the women in the geospatial community. She will stress the importance of the mapping with a feminist perspective, and she will highlight the topic of the gender representation in the public space and the, in the community. Then we will have Marco Minghini. He is going to uh, talk about the relation uh, between big corporation and a uh, bottom-up project as OpenStreetMap is. And we will try to understand what happens when such giants start to uh, be interested in a uh, bottom-up project such as OpenStreetMap. Marco Minghini is, uh, is the scientific project officer at the Res Joint Research Center of the European Commu Commission. He holds a PhD in environmental and infrastructure engineering at the Politecnico di Milano, and he is also a member of the OpenStreetMap Foundation. And then last but not least, we have Anisa Pucci, who will join us for the Q&A session at the end. She is the coordinator of the OpenStreetMap project at Wikimedia Italia, and she is also an expert in community management and community engagement. So I'm sure that she will give us a really useful insight about the topic. So now I leave the floor to Selene Young. Just one last uh, communication. Selene, unfortunately, is not able to remain with us for the whole um, duration of the talk. So we will have a short Q&A session after our presentation. So everyone is interested in making questions to her. Please be ready and uh, because she has to leave. <laughs> so Selene, when you want, you can go. <laughs> thank you so much for the introduction and thank you everyone for being here and wanting to listen to our experiences. As Alegra said, I'm Sele, I'm Selena Yang. I'm based in Nicaragua. Um, I'm a co-founder of the initiative from OpenStreetMap and actually uh, from the community of OSGEO or FOS4G of GeoChicas. And I'm gonna start presenting real quick. Give me a second. Here we go. Do you all see my, oh, I think you all see also my my tabs right well doesn't matter <laughs> i usually hide the book smart tab but this today is like it's really early in the morning so I'm thank sorry. you so much <laughs> what time is it there um it's 9 a.m but oh, my day is sorry, like like seven. <laughs> it's my pleasure i'm pretty buried um but thank you all for being here so i'm selling i'm also a global DEI specialist at the Wikimedia Foundation, so I'm not mm. only an open street mapper, but I'm also um, part of the Wikipedia community. That's why I said about <laughs> open street map being like the Wikipedia of maps. So a little bit about GeoChicas is that we're an initiative that started off as an Spanish speaking only from Latin American women working group for OpenStreetMap. And we are right now around 300 women from I think 30, 32 different countries. Um, two years ago, we launched also the, um, the GeoChicas initiative in English. So you can see the map here on where we are. We used to have a open group on Telegram or all of our communications go through Telegram and our Twitter um, profile, but we had to close the access, like the public access to the Telegram group due to 
some insecurity bridges, I'd say, from the community. Some people, Ben, basically, um, started to like kind of spy on us and start uh, print screening our communications and then start to share them publicly. So it was a terrible situation, but that happened. But we usually are an open group for all women. And when I say women, I mean, everybody who perceives themselves as women can be part of the group. So what we started off doing is that we started asking ourselves, what was the role of women, the participation of women? What was the role of women in the community? was the amount of participation of women in the community of OpenStreetMap and also the representation of women in decision-making spaces of the community. This is something that started off for, as I said before, for only OpenStreetMap community, but as we started working, we started seeing that the same kind of needs of discussion and analysis were happening around other communities uh, regarding geospatial that work with geospatial data. So from OpenStreetMap, we went out to a broader community, which is uh, the OSGEO community. And we also bridge, because we understand that we are not alone in this digital ecosystem. And we understand that the same questions that we're asking ourselves about this, the role, participation, and representation of women is the same kind of questions that other women are asking themselves in other communities. So we bridge our work with other, other groups of women, like for example, our ladies for the R, like for the R project. We also have direct communication with the Python ladies, with I think the other one is Rails but I can't remember the name of them. But the, th the thing is that we understand that we're not alone in this and that since this is an ecosystem, what happens to us directly influences what happens in other communities because we're all in the same, like in the same dimension of digital, uh, like of digital necessities, if you may. So what we do is that we try to understand the production of geospatial data with the feminist perspective. The feminist perspective that we think about the production of this kind of data and the way in which we understand the relations of space and how their gender relations is that, first of all, since we are a community of people who are creating this data and it's not coming from like on a vertical, from a vertical perspective of the creation of this data, is that um, feminists like a feminist perspective on doing this is inherently collaborative. So just by the fact of by the fact of us being united as a same front in the community and working collaboratively, for us that's the first step on understanding this from a feminist perspective because we rely on each other and we understand each other's differences and we acknowledge them and we embrace them. So that's the first approach that we have towards understanding this part from a feminist perspective. I do want to like, let me see how I, how I can put it, like understanding the way in which a feminist perspective is different than just than talking about a gendered perspective on creating geospatial data in the sense of we can have gender geography, geography that focuses on gender relations it's on the space, for example, but that doesn't necessarily give you a feminist approach towards doing what you're doing. So there are many things in way in, in which we can think methodological, how to have a feminist perspective. And one of them is being collaborative. What I mean when I talk about like how we perceive like the space being gendered and like the relations of power that are, are out there and on how we make use of the public space from this perspective of a feminist, from this point of view as a feminist and also from our community is that this is a basic example. And I know Anissa and Marco have seen this example, I think in all of my presentations, but it's really basic and it gives you like, like a fast sense of seeing the problem is that what you're seeing right now here is um, machine, like vending machines, one for condoms, 
that are usually on men's bathrooms and the other one for feminine hygiene products, meaning tampons, for example, for women that are basically always on the women's restrooms. Am I correct? Yes. Maybe we haven't seen them, but we kind of understand the binarism of the use of space here, right? So also what we see here is that on the first, uh, on the first photo that you see there, there are only 10 vending machines for feminine hygiene mapped on OpenStreetMap. And on the second uh, picture you see there, there are 1,992 condom vending machines mapped on OpenStreetMap. So it's pretty easy to kind of see like the scale to what Allegra was saying at the beginning when we say that we basically map our interests. That's why we say that the data that we're creating is completely subjective and it's entangled with all of the power dynamics that come to, that are there like on how we perceive like power relations in the space and in, in any kind of relations in society, we can see the power relations there, you know, like we see them on the infrastructure itself, on the public space. And this is just one part of it, which would be like, what can we access, right? But there are other things in which we don't see ourselves represented out there in the, in the public space. So that's why we started creating uh, different initiatives from GeoChicas to start producing the data that is missing there and how we can start thinking about the production of this data, but from a feminist and from a gender perspective. So what you see, I'm sorry, for example, on the first slide that says Edithathon, Mapathon, uh, Regional Institutions for Services for Women, this was for our second anniversary. Then there's also a regional mapathon that we did that it was related to um, informal settlements and infrastructure for for readiness on to to start understanding like how threats and risk how can we think about the space from a risk assessment perspective but having like a feminism like having a gender perspective towards space so why people were asking us like how do you even like tie gender to informal settlements to risk reduction practices so the, like, it's really simple to say in countries like in, in many countries in Latin America, for example, women are the ones who's, who are basically staying at home, taking, being caregivers, taking care of the house. And it's something that like, it's reproducible to any other uh, place that we might think. So when you take it into an informal settlement, what happens is that women are more, more vulnerable to the threats and to the risks because they are indeed the ones that are staying in the informal settlement, taking care of children and taking care of elders. So that's the approach that we try to give to all of our, our interventions, understand the way in which the space is produced uh, in a sense that we are always in disadvantage. Another example is that when we say that we wanna like go out in the space and start understanding. This is like what I was telling you about that the first one could be the, the example of the use and what we can access from the out in, like from the infrastructure that's mapped out there. But this is the part in which we see ourselves represented out there. KubaConf was, um, was a conference back in the day where women started photo mapping Cuba, like the Oaxaca photo mapping project was also in Mexico, was also to understand the public infrastructure in which women could have access to after the earthquake that struck Mexico in 2017. And also, for example, this is a huge project that we have that's called the Streets of Women. And this is something that we decided for an International Women Day to have like as a collaborative first huge project for us to work as the OpenStreetMap community with also another community, which was Wikipedia community. So in this project, what you can see is the amount of streets that are named after a woman or after a man in a, in a city, right? And you also see here, what are the amount of these streets that are the ones that are named after women or men who also have an article 
written for them, like as a like the bio article for them. And you can see here that, for example, 67.7% um, of the names of women that are mapped <laughs> here that are that have a street name after them have an article in Wikipedia. So this gives us like the other perspective in which we don't see ourselves represented out there. So when we are walking down streets that only have name of men or battles, which is something really common here in, in Latin America, we don't see that we are there, like that we are also part of the history, that we were also people who with accomplishments and who also deserve to be out there. So there's this is a small like experiment that we also do like, we say like, how can we want to be engineers when at the beginning, when we were like children, we would get like small little kitchens and then my brother would get like a, like a remote control car, for example, you know, like, and it's the same on how we see ourselves out there. If we don't see that there are other women that are making history, we might think that we won't be able to make history either. So this is another of the projects that we have. This is something that it's, I don't know if you all see this example, this activity that was, that was called um, A Rapist in Your Path from the Chilean community of Las Tesis. It was like this huge thing that happened as a performance to start to protest against the government saying that the governments are the ones who are raping us and like the institutions are the one raping us. So this was a performance that was reproduced in I think 500 different uh, cities and countries. I, if any of you is interested, please do look for it. The rape is in your path performance and it's super strong. So what we did here is that we started mapping that so we can give visibility to a problematic that is not necessarily geographical per se, but that could be easily understood by having a map of it, by representing the amount of places in which this was reproduced. So this was another collaboration we had with the international feminists, you know, like the international socialists, like the organization, well, there is a one that's feminist. <laughs> and this was our collaboration with them. We also have here, well, I'm almost done because I know we're um, are almost at time, but these are two different um, set of quotes that I always use to understand the fact that mapping is not just putting geospatial data out there, mapping our practices and that those practices, um, the data that we're creating comes from us, from our own perspective and from our own personal experiences and lived experiences that we're putting out there. And oh, just a quick, this is something that we just launched with the Latin American Initiative for Open Data. And it's a small research that I produced that it's ethical feminist for geospatial data. And it encompasses like different experiences of what people understand as ethics on geospatial data and how can we give it a feminist perspective to those practices. Currently it's been translated collaboratively uh, out there, it's on a GitHub page and I can share it with you all if you're interested, but what we talk is how can we challenge those power relations that we see out there, not only in the space, but that we are the ones producing those, producing and reproducing those power relations and those power dynamics from what we're doing. And thank you so much. I know this was fast and I'm sorry that I won't be able to stay for the rest, for the rest of the Q&A but I'm having like some complicated situations with my family, but I'm here for the next 10 minutes if you all want to ask me anything. Don't worry, Iselani, and thank you. Thank you very much for your interesting presentation. Uh, Sorry if so... I went... What? Sorry if I went too fast. No, don't worry, don't worry. It was super interesting and you gave us a lot of things to look out and a lot of names of projects. So really, thank you very much. Uh, I would start with the questions. So if someone wants to make a question to Zelene, please speak up. You can either write on the chat or just open up the microphone and speak. So I'll give you some seconds. Otherwise, I will start and break the ice and then you can you can enter. 
Okay. I think I'll go first, so <laughs> I'll start. Uh, it is quite technical. Uh, I mean, OpenStreetMap has a um, as a, um, a system of tags and uh, a, a data system for mapping things. So, do you record? Like, do you, did you manage to map what you wanted to map with the project and with all the different projects that you that you did with this system of of tags? Or did you have to find new ones? Or like, did you recognize yourself? We could put it this way, in uh, into the system that is already in OpenStreetMap, or did you have to change things or to add things? I think the beauty of it is that we can create as a community our own tags. Okay. And there was yeah, there was also an initiative that it's tagging in tagging in support of women and girls that you can see in the OpenStreetMap wiki. And there are a set of recommendations in which we can add more tags to the, to the entire tag ecosystem that we have in OpenStreetMap that could actually speak to the needs of women that we need to see in the map. Does that make sense? There's also another initiative that's called Rainbow OSM, which is the LGBTQI uh, initiative to start creating uh, more tags that are more inclusive. For example, um, we didn't consider, and I say we as the community itself, how would we tag specific, for example, clinics in which transgender people can go take their treatment, hormonal treatment, for example. And you, usually in OpenStreetMap, you get the basic tax that that's just a clinic. So the thing is that we're not just creating more tags, we're trying to like meta tag <laughs> the tax that are already there so we can have more details that could represent what we need to see. The same happens in, in for example, and, and that's just like a really extreme example of what you can find and where you cannot find. But if you wanna go to something more basic, I. I think, and I, I'm not quite sure right now, but please anyone, Marco, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there's still there's still no consent to having a tag for gynecological treatment in clinics in OpenStreetMap, for example. What you have here is a community that is built upon a 90% of male of, of men and a 3% of women. So when you try to get consensus, around to our needs, it's a lot more complicated and it's a battle <laughs> for 90% of people to understand the need of those 3% of people. And if you go and you try to actually detangle the entire community, what you see there is that you also have men that do not believe in, the, in our needs, men that are allies, and that's amazing. Uh, you can also find men that are only technical and who basically never speak the same language as you. And like there's such a huge um, difference in the users and the collaborators and our perspectives to how we see this that it's for, for us it's always a constant battle. It's it's that and like it's the same battle as being an activist for human rights out there as it is the same battle to to be activists on the on the production of, of data that it's really. Um, that it's really used and really well used from outside of our community. Like there are many huge, and I think Marco eventually will talk about like the different partnerships of the people that consume the data that we produce. So yeah, it's a struggle, it's a battle, but we're there. Yeah, we could see that it's not a technical problem. I mean, from the technical side, it's easily, um, you can solve it it's easily, but probably there are other prob bigger problems to be tackled before. Yeah, just Go. wanted to, um, I see that um, our Nali share on the chat, the rainbow yeah. of the stream map community. I, th that's a small safe group for LGBTQ people who are part of the open stream map community. So it's open, but not quite open. In the sense that we are <laughs> trying right. to build, <laughs> the right we're trying to build a safe space for people who are from the community for all of us, you know? So like from the LGBTQI community. Yeah. That's the next. 
And thank you very much to Arnali, who is uh, who's sharing a lot of interesting links and things to look up. So thank you very much. Okay, uh, are there any other questions? Is there somebody who wants to ask something to <laughs> to Zene? Please go ahead. Otherwise, we can leave her. <laughs> I can stay for a couple more minutes if you want. You can like Mark can start if he wants and I will can see the chat and then I'll just say my goodbye. So thank you for listening to me. I think you are free, Sele, because uh, nobody is picking up. So in any case, I if someone wants to ask her something and now he's too shy or whatever things, you can write to me directly and I can... Um, I can email something to you and otherwise you have a, a lot of information about her project and so you can look it up on the internet. <laughs> so thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was really interesting and there were a lot of interesting projects and have a nice day since <laughs> it's morning in, in the other part of the world. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I think we can move to Marco. Marco, are you there? Yes, still cool. here. So thank you to okay, you again. Let me <laughs> go go. Let me try to share my screen. Yeah. And uh, please confirm that you can see. We see the everything. PowerPoint yeah. in full screen now. Yep. Sure. We see everything. Okay. Great. So first of all. Hi everyone, thanks a lot Allegra for putting this up. A pleasure for me to, to be here. I've seen uh, uh, quite some familiar names uh, in, uh, in the audience, so I take the chance to say hi to all the people I already know and happy to see you here, but also hi to the new faces. As, as you will see, as you will hear in my presentation, OpenStreetMap is also a community, it's mainly a community, so we are all here for the very fact that we are a community. So, uh, and uh, thanks, Selene, for the brilliant uh, presentation. We is also preparing in a way, paving the way for, for my talk, because I will say some things that are directly related uh, to what you have already heard, but then I will move to uh, exploring the role uh, or the potential role uh, uh, of corporations uh, uh, within the OpenStreetMap ecosystem. Uh, maybe just before starting, a few words about me for those of you who uh, uh, have never uh, uh, had the chance or that I have never had the chance to, to, to meet in person or virtually given the uh, current circumstances. So I, I work, uh, as it was said, at the, at the European Commission, at the Joint Research Center, which is basically the research center supporting the anticipation the evaluation, the assessment of the policies uh, of the European Commission. I'm based in Italy, uh, in Ispra, in the northwest uh, 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 of Italy, not so far from Politecnico di Torino, who is host that is hosting this event, uh, but uh, more related to OpenStreetMap, I'm a long-standing contributor since 2018. I'm an active member of the Italian community of OpenStreetMap. I'm a member of the foundation and also in particular of the working group uh, uh, responsible for organizing the annual uh, State of the Map conference. You will hear more on this later. I was, uh, well, I, I am, I was at that time the co-founder of Polymappers, uh, that is the Students Association from Polytech. Politecnico di Milano because I worked at Politecnico. I also studied at Politecnico di Milano. And uh, uh, well, quite some years ago, I, I would say five, six or six probably years ago, we founded this uh, Polymappers Association, which is a, a member of the Youth Mappers Association. Many of you might be familiar with that, with that as well. Um, I'm also co-chairing the academic track of the State of the Map Conference since 2018. I'm also voting member of the humanitarian open street map team hot uh, i've seen some people from hot here in the audience so maybe we can discuss uh, later about any of this point of course i'm also a fan a user a trainer an educator whatever about open source geospatial software and i'm a member a charter member of osgeo which is the open source geospatial foundation and its local um, uh, italian chapter which is called gpost.it i divided my presentation in three 
parts. Uh, first of all, a very, very quick introduction to OpenStreetMap because something was already said by Allegra in the introduction. Then I will uh, um, uh, show and say something about uh, who maps what, uh, who, where do people map, what do people map, in order to anticipate the third and last part that is about uh, the role of the corporations and corporate editing uh, in OpenStreetMap. So very, very quickly, OpenStreetMap is uh, what uh, can be defined as the most popular VGI project, where VGI stands for Volunteer Geographic Information, was started by Steve Cost in 2004. What is important to remember is that OpenStreetMap is not the map that we see at OpenStreetMap.org, but it is uh, the database that is behind the map. So it's a database of points, lines, and polygons. This is for the people who are not maybe too familiar with the, with the project. It is not just a database, uh, it is free, uh, free in the sense of freedom, not in the sense that, well, it is also free in the sense of free of cost, but when we speak about free data, free software, we mean free as in freedom. And in fact, uh, OSM is available under the old DBL, the open database license, and it is a crowdsourced database. Let me just zoom a bit into this word, crowdsourced. So crowdsourcing means uh, out, so it's the action of outsourcing something, some task, some action to the crowd. Who is the crowd? Then we will see. And well, you can already get an idea of who is the crowd. Okay, um, well, literature says that OpenStreetMap has become the largest, but also the most various, the most complete, and also the most up-to-date geospatial database um, in the world. Uh, it is also known as the Wikipedia of the maps because of this crowdsourcing nature. Important, uh, OpenStreetMap is not an alternative to Google Maps. So whenever you, uh, I mean, whenever you think to OpenStreetMap, please think to OpenStreetMap as a database. First of all, then there are some services built on top of the database, like uh, the tiles, like uh, the routing services, and many others which are comparable to some services offered by Google. But Google, for example, is not offering its database. It's the geospatial database that is behind uh, the data set, that is behind the, the, the Google Maps or the Google Street Map or the Google whatever uh, the map. Um, also, uh, in OpenStreetMap, in principle, everyone can map anything. So it's a process that uh, with, with, with the biases, with the uh, underrepresentations that of course uh, have to be acknowledged, but OpenStreetMap is, is, is neutral in this way, in the sense that who wants to add data can add data. For Google, please keep in mind, Google decides what to have on its map. Google decides what is in the map and what is out of the map. We are not here to explore such differences, but for example, if you go to places in developing countries or in some specific places, you will see an empty Google map. Not because there is no data in reality, but because Google is not interested to have data uh, in, in those areas. Um, in other cases, Google, for example, introduces data, introduces errors, mistakes in the data on purpose. Uh, why? Well, for the different reasons, but uh, the idea is that it's a map uh, done by a company. The company decides what is on the map. Uh, in a way, OpenStreetMap, again, uh, has biases, has uh, issues, uh, also as, uh, but is a transparent, is an open, is a, is, a, is a collaborative process. Everyone can map as soon as you map the data, as soon as, soon as you add something, the data is there, is visible, is in the database. Community. So uh, again, this is for mostly for those of you who are less familiar with the project, but I think it's a nice introduction just to uh, answer some basic questions like uh, how many people um, uh, contribute to uh, the project. Currently, we have more than 7.5 million users who created an OpenStreetMap account, which is mandatory to start contributing, but then only 1.6 million have done at least one edit, one change to the map. So many people actually register, but never contribute. And you can see on the left hand side of the slide, uh, the, uh, the, the, the cumulative curve of the registered users and on the right hand side, the cumulative curve of the active contributors. So more or less there are about uh, uh, 50,000 uh, active contributors per month and about 120 million edits per month, just to give you some numbers. Uh, who is behind the OpenStreetMap project? Uh, the, the answer is the OpenStreetMap Foundation or that one of the answers is the OpenStreetMap Foundation, because this is a, a not-for-profit organization. Uh, it's based in the UK. It is important to know what the foundation does. It supports 
but it does not control the OpenStreetMap project. What does it mean? It supports the project, first of all, legally. So it's, uh, it acts as a legal uh, entity and custodian uh, for the project. It maintains the infrastructure. This is the most important thing the foundation does. So basically, the, 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 the the servers that are storing the data, that are serving the data, the tiles, these are, um, let's say, uh, the, the foundation is basically paying uh, to, uh, to maintain them. And it also promotes fundraising to support the project. So basically, when you donate to the foundation, uh, uh, you are basically supporting the OpenStreetMap uh, project. So um, uh, the, uh, the conference that is uh, held annually, that is called State of the Map, as mentioned before, is organized by the foundation. And clearly, the money uh, collected for the conference goes to the foundation to maintain, to keep the OpenStreetMap project alive. This is important because the sustainability is key for, for, for this project, but for any uh, project. The foundation is organized into a board of directors. So basically, there is a board of a few people, and there are several working groups made up of volunteers, uh, one of, uh, of which is the state of the map uh, working group already mentioned before, but we have there are other working uh, groups like uh, responsible for specific aspects, data, licensing, communication, membership and so on and so forth. So uh, what does it mean that, that the foundation doesn't control the project? Uh, it means that, for example, the foundation does not decide uh, on which tags have to be used and which tags have not to be used, okay? This is up to the community because at the end, the community, and we will come to this in the next slide, is actually uh, leading, uh, driving the project. Uh, everyone can become a member. So to become a member of the foundation, you have to pay an annual fee or uh, starting from next from last year, actually, if you are an active contributor, so if you have adding a sufficient amount of data over the last year, if, I, if, I'm, wrong, if I'm not wrong, you can become a member. You need to apply for membership. So basically everyone can easily become a member. Once you are a member, you can vote for the board of directors. So I encourage you to become a member of to better understand what's going on, to read the, the emails from the mailing list and to get to know a bit more uh, the, the global uh, community. Uh, global community. So here uh, we are. Uh, this is basically so state of the map is clearly the best way for the community, for the global community at least, to meet. So OSM is a big community, first of all, at the global level. There's this annual conference. Who joins the conference? Well, everyone interested in OpenStreetMap. Uh, we have developers of, of the software. We have users, of course. We have academics, because there's an academic track. We have thematic groups. Uh, thematic means, uh, for example, gender-based groups, uh, geographically-based groups, uh, any kind of groups that want to meet together. And uh, these are the pictures of the last three physical uh, state of the map conferences, 2017 in Japan, 2018 in Italy, 2019 in Germany. I had the pleasure to be uh, attending all the three. Unfortunately, in 2020 and also in 2021, COVID uh, uh, prevented us from a physical uh, conference. But I invite you uh, not, to, uh, not to miss the online conference this year that will be in one month. So more or less, it's uh, um, 9, 10, and 11 of July, but I'm, I'm, I'm okay. We can check later, but uh, please have a look at the website stateofthemap.org and you will find the dates of this year's conference. There's a very rich program and uh, this is free of cost, so you can really register for free and join three days of uh, talks, discussions, workshops, uh, academic tracks, talks, and so on and so forth. OSM is, is, is people, uh, as I said, is it, it, a community. And this is one of the uh, most beautiful aspects of the community. And here you can see pictures of uh, me together with the other speakers uh, that, uh, uh, that are here today, Selene and also Anisa. Uh, you won't believe, but uh, uh, Selene, Anisa and I, that was really a coincidence. Uh, we are the speakers today, but we also met uh, all together uh, once uh, uh, in a single place that was in Japan for the 2017 conference in uh, in uh, in Japan yeah and so we we spent clearly not just the conference but we spent quite some nice time together uh, there having fun and this is also how a community uh, grows uh, on the left hand side you can see basically the the, the, the group picture of all the, uh, the scholars so the people who got uh, were lucky enough I would say to get a scholarship to attend the conference and I can just tell you that 
we still have a WhatsApp group that we use for uh, communication around OpenStreetMap, just to also tell you how much a community counts. And the fact that we are here now having this webinar, I think, means that we are building a community. Community is not just conferences, because typically there are local communities, national communities, thematic communities, and there are many, many different ways to be involved. Uh, mailing lists uh, on the national, local level, mapathons, um, mapping parties, so physical events to map. So OSM is really a, 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 a project that is also really sustaining and boosting the development of a nice, uh, beautiful um, uh, communities that also last over time because we are all uh, here and uh, with polymappers, for example, we also had a lot of relations with uh, relations and contacts with other chapters. So I encourage you, Allegra, that is organizing this webinar, but also all of you who are attending this to really see what you can personally do to actually join a community, to start a new community and, uh, um, and to really liaise with other uh, communities. So uh, some more, uh, uh, let's say, uh, concrete uh, questions about the communities and contributions. So where do users uh, contribute most to OpenStreetMap? Of course, it's a crowdsourcing project uh, on a voluntary basis, more or less voluntary, we will see later. Uh, so this uh, means that actually the rate of contributions is not the same everywhere in the world. There are countries where people map actually much more than others. Uh, this is uh, a screenshot from a website, uh, uh, one of the many websites uh, set up by Pascal Neis. Um, it shows on a daily basis uh, how many users are active in which country. So this is a screenshot taken some, some days ago. So if you, uh, if you click the link and do and, and, and see this page today, the numbers are different, but, but probably the, the ranking is, is not that different. So we have, for example, the Germany, the community in Germany is particularly active. Uh, this is uh, very well known. Uh, you see the number of contributors on a daily basis is much higher, the double, uh, uh, of those active in the United States. Of course, the United States are much larger than Germany. And then we have France, UK, Italy. This is more or less the ranking that you could find almost uh, every day. So community, so people are active, uh, uh, let's say, uh, so there are more and less active people in the different parts of the world. It's not just where people map, but what people uh, map. Mm -hmm. Here, I just took two uh, very clear, very different examples, just to give you an idea of what people are actually interested to map. Uh, Selene before said that we always map our interests. So we map what we are interested in. Uh, so two clear examples here. On the left hand side, this is the Cathedral of Milan, very popular, worldwide popular. So for those of you who uh, were in Milan for State of the Map 2018, you have seen it. This is really popular, famous, uh, well visited. So it's a very popular and interesting uh, object to map. And in fact, uh, here we can see we have 66. Uh, uh, so the, the current version of the object in OpenStreetMap is the number 66. And a total of 47 different contributors have mapped, have contributed to add tags to this object. On the right hand side, we have a tree. So this is a tree, it's still in Milan. So it's really some hundred meters away from the cathedral, but still this tree, this was only mapped once, so was added by a user and never updated. So this is also to say that, of course, we also map what is more interesting. Uh, by the way, I took these screenshots from um, an application that is, uh, well, was developed by one of my former uh, students at the university, a very nice one for, uh, 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 let's say, statistics uh, and also visual um, results on uh, uh, frequency of updates and number of contributors and so on. So, give it a, a try if you have some time. Who contribute to OpenStreetMap? But that's also important. Uh, OpenStreetMap is aligned with uh, basically other online um, collaborative projects such as Wikipedia and uh, is aligned to the so-called Nielsen's rule of 991 rule, which basically means 90% of people usually uh, only consume content, 9% uh, change or updates, only updates content, content, 1% basically does the job. So 1% of people actually add the real content. Um, another way to say this is that basically 10% um, of the people produce 90% of the data. Uh, and this is also true in OpenStreetMap. 
So uh, from the graph uh, below, but also from the, uh, uh, you, you, can, you can very clearly see this, although this is uh, updated uh, uh, in 2019, but the, the idea is, is, very, is very clear. Of course, there are uh, under representations in OpenStreetMap, but this has been already well said by Selene, so we'll not repeat that there are biases and there are under representations in OpenStreetMap, of course. And this uh, very naturally leads to uh, corporate editors in OpenStreetMap. And let me just start again from the same uh, question, who is contributing and why people are contributing to OpenStreetMap? There are a number of users or organizations that are finding, of course, interesting and useful for their specific uh, interest to contribute to OpenStreetMap. Uh, not just corporations, uh, but let's, for example, start from humanitarian organizations. Uh, OpenStreetMap is a key tool, platform, database for them also to create data, uh, because uh, clearly it's, uh, it's uh, usually uh, the most up-to-date or sometimes even the only available data source in some uh, parts of the world. Uh, it's a very nice platform to create data that is up-to-date and so on and so forth. So humanitarian organizations are also looking at OpenStreetMap uh, with uh, interest, but also governments and more and more because of uh, the fact that they could, uh, in principle, use OpenStreetMap. And sometimes they are actually doing that to update, to complement their official uh, data. Because collecting data, uh, collecting authoritative data is costly, is expensive, it, it's, uh, it's very time consuming. So OpenStreetMap might represent a good alternative. Of course, this is all possible for two main reasons. The first is that OpenStreetMap is uh, open licensed, as we have seen said before. The second and is that OpenStreetMap is actually a high quality uh, data set. So typically, it's not just high quality or can become uh, with some intervention, a high quality data, data set. Uh, it's a highly complete. It can have a very high positional accuracy. Um, and, and this is the reason, basically. Um, uh, the level of detail of OpenStreetMap is very, very uh, high. So it's a local uh, database at the end. For the very same reason, also corporations uh, started or now some, some years ago, several years ago, in some cases, to actually uh, not just use OpenStreetMap, but because of the fact they are using OpenStreetMap for their interest, which is of course a commercial interest, so to make money, uh, they are also contributing to OpenStreetMap. They are paying people to actually map OpenStreetMap. So there are people, the paid editors or uh, corporate editors that basically do OSM mapping just because this is their job. And here you have 10 logos of companies that are more or less the main, you'd say the most uh, popular ones that um, have, um, uh, that employ paid uh, editors. And you can re even recognize some of the, 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 the really the, the big names here. So we have the big five here with the exception of Google. So we have Facebook, Apple, Amazon, um, Bing, which is Microsoft, and, and so on and so forth. Let's, I will show you some example here. So uh, just some examples of map-based products which are uh, used by those big corporations. Uh, I I hope you can recognize some of them. So this one is from um, Snapchat, which is developed and provided by Mapbox, so the map. Uh, this one is the Facebook map. I'm not sure if you're all aware of that, but uh, Facebook uses OpenStreetMap for the maps. So you can see here uh, the copyright. Um, this one below is from Strava. Strava is a social network for uh, runners and uh, cyclists. Uh, I'm sure many of you use Strava. I use it uh, very often. And this is, again, an OpenStreetMap map made by Mapbox. On the right hand side, this is uh, two screenshots from mobile. This is Grab. For those of you who do not know about Grab, this is a, a company based in Singapore, which uh, is providing a, a, a set of services, including a, a ride hailing transport or a, a, a payment services, food delivery, for example. Uh, so uh, they are very much interested in OpenStreetMap. And I will tell you why in a minute. The last one is from Apple. So if you have an iPhone, just open your uh, uh, Apple Maps and you will see that basically OpenStreetMap is mentioned uh, um, as one, uh, typically one of the many uh, data sources used uh, for the map. So OpenStreetMap is really uh, behind uh, the maps, uh, even the most, uh, um, the, the ones that we use the most. Uh, so, okay, so from one side, uh, these big corporations uh, 
contribute data to OpenStreetMap. They use OpenStreetMap to make money. In, in, in some cases, a lot of money. Uh, what do they uh, contribute back uh, to OpenStreetMap? First of all, the data, okay, uh, because they are mapping. So they are adding data to OpenStreetMap. Most of the times they are also contributed, uh, contributing back uh, economically. So they typically support, they are corporate members of the OSM Foundation. You can see on the left-hand side, the list of the current gold corporate members of the foundation and you can recognize some of the companies mentioned before but also they sponsor the open street map uh, state of the map conferences this is a screenshot of the current state of sponsors uh, of the, uh, the 2021 uh, conference again you can recognize some of uh, the logos um, the question uh, you might ask is, okay, how can uh, we track, how can we identify and quantify the contributions uh, uh, in terms of mapping provided by those big corporations? Luckily, there are ways to do that. Uh, there is a very uh, easy and linear way to do that, which is uh, basically um, uh, Thanks to, we'll say, mostly thanks to uh, a document which is the which is called the organizing uh, mapping guidelines, organizing editing guidelines that was released by the foundation. I will I will uh, say something more at the end. Um, each uh, organized uh, editing activity, including the activity of corporations, needs to be uh, um, needs to be uh, described with a uh, sufficient level of detail in a wiki page and in particular the full list of the OpenStreetMap contributors who contribute to the um, organized editing has to be um, uh, there. So for example, here you have the just the, 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 the initial part of the wiki page for Amazon. If you go to this uh, page, you scroll down, then you have the very, very, very long list of all the OpenStreetMap contributors mapping for Amazon. So in a way you can, uh, given that uh, each edit done by any people uh, in OpenStreetMap is tracked, is record, is saved forever in the database, you can go and actually see when these people map, how much they map, what they map, where they map, and so on and so forth. There are actually some other, let's say, more modern ways or other ways to actually track the contributions. For example, uh, if you run some uh, machine learning or some uh, very uh, uh, simple clustering uh, uh, algorithm, you can easily uh, isolate the activity of these corporate contributions because they typically, uh, corporate editors, because they typically work, uh, they typically follow a Monday to Friday uh, working pattern uh, and even a nine to 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. pattern. So it's quite easy. It has become quite easy or at least uh, quite, uh, let's say, possible uh, also by simply looking at the data without looking at the wiki pages to actually identify and track this uh, activity. Um, on the right hand side, you can see an example of a GitHub page. GitHub is also a very uh, used platform by these uh, corporations because it's a platform that is very naturally uh, suitable for um, uh, community and engagement. So here, uh, typically GitHub is used uh, because of the issue tracker functionality to actually get questions from the community and to provide answers, to engage, to solve issues together, to get community feedback, and so on and so forth. And this is the example of the open uh, data team from uh, Microsoft uh, Bing. So what do they map uh, mainly? Um, well, many things, of course, but uh, if I had to choose one type of object, uh, they mainly map row. And uh, what is the main reason? The main reason is that most of the commercial products that uh, are based on OpenStreetMap, not all, but most of them rely on a navigable, on a routable road network. Think, for example, to Grab or to Uber or to Amazon uh, that are actually using it for delivering uh, things uh, like Amazon, or that is uh, drivers are delivering things to people, Grab uh, for transportation, Uber for the very same reason, so they really need uh, to perform routing. And uh, if you are, if you have studied some GIS, you know that in order to correctly uh, perform routing uh, and navigation, you need a, a topologically correct and routable uh, road network. This is the main reason why a lot of corporations are um, um, uh, focusing actually on 
two roads. The table below actually provides some numbers. This is taken from a paper, and I would like to thank uh, the authors of the paper, in particular Jennings, Anderson, and co-authors uh, for this very, very nice paper that I really encourage you to read. This is the first, uh, uh, was the first analysis of uh, the um, impact of uh, corporate editors uh, uh, on OpenStreetMap. It was published in 2019, so it's still very recent, I would say, and it. Uh, reflects what should be, uh, what is the current situation uh, even now. Um, another um, comment here is that uh, many, many times the contributions of these corporate editors are not direct, uh, are not in the form of a direct mapping. So maybe uh, drawing things on top of satellite imagery, but it is also the review, the check, the validation of the data, or better of the results returned from automated algorithm, like uh, a deep uh, neural networks uh, algorithm that automatically extract uh, things from satellite imagery, like uh, uh, roads or buildings. For example, just to give you an example, Facebook uh, has mapped basically all the roads in Thailand um, exactly with this procedure. So first they run uh, an algorithm just to basically extract uh, in a fully automated way the candidate roads and then operators uh, uh, validated, reviewed, and then uploaded uh, the data in OpenStreetMap. So this is happening uh, basically most uh, of the times. It's not just a, a, a matter of data, it's also a matter of software. So many uh, of the software tools that are used by the whole community have actually are influenced by companies. For example, the ID editor that I think all of you know was initially developed by uh, Mapbox or by Mapbox uh, uh, employees. OSM Cha, which is a very uh, used, widely used tool, very popular one to uh, track, to check, to monitor change sets, uh, is also a tool released by Mapbox. Uh, Mapbox being an Esri are the main providers of the image that we are all using to uh, trace uh, things in OpenStreetMap. So there is also an indirect uh, influence on the OSM ecosystem. Where do corporations map? Again, from uh, uh, this uh, paper, uh, we can see that basically each corporation has its own uh, footprint. Some of them are uh, actually mapping everywhere in the world. This is uh, again, because they have an interest to map everywhere because they are selling products uh, everywhere, or at least with, with, uh, with the maps of any region in the world. Some others like, for example, Grab, as mentioned before, have an interest in specific areas, like in the case of Grab, the Southeast Asia. Uh, in the case of Telenav, this is mostly the US. In the case of Microsoft, well, mostly US and Australia and so on. But globally, so if we sum up all those contributions, uh, the footprint is really global. So the, in this case, the, uh, the, the, the more the color is towards the white and the higher the contribution. So you can see that basically the whole world is uh, covered uh, by uh, data mapped or edited from the corporations. And the last uh, image I extracted from the paper, because this is very meaningful in my opinion, is, is this one. On the left hand side, you can see the uh, profiles, we can call them the mapping profiles of the corporations. And on the right hand side, you can see the mapping profiles of the standard, let's say the non corporate editors. So once again, we can see that uh, the uh, profiles are very much biased um, um, to roads. So they are, uh, they are creating roads, but they are also editing roads. That's, that's very important. Let's go to grab, for example, here. Um, so what is important? So why editing and not uh, creating new roads? Well, typically roads, uh, you know, roads are one of the very first things that are added to the open street map map. So uh, typically roads are already there, at least in many parts of the world. But many of the times, as I said before, the roads are there, but the road network is not navigable, or maybe it is, but it's not really representing the reality. So what many companies are doing is actually to improve the road network. For example, again, a statistics, uh, Grab has mapped 95% uh, of all the turn restrictions in Singapore, to give you an idea, so to assist uh, drivers. Uh, again, so they, most of the time, they mm, edit uh, things. And you can see that the attention that they pay to POIs, points of interest, amenities, buildings also is not that, that high, while the standard contributor is typically mapping uh, other features like amenities, points of interest buildings, uh, but not really new roads or um, uh, existing roads. And let me close with this slide that tries to summarize 
the whole picture and, uh, uh, and uh, ask some uh, open, actually, uh, questions. So first of all, we can uh, for sure say that the corporate editors have, be have become something that is stable. So is there, is, in the, is part of the OSM ecosystem. It's not a new thing because uh, uh, this uh, interest from corporations started, as I said, or, already five, six, seven years ago for, for some companies, but then it has now become really part of the game uh, in a way. So in 2018, again, the authors of that paper report that 30% of all the edits globally is done by corporations, which uh, on one side means that this is a lot, on the other side, this uh, means, uh, okay, it's a lot, but it's not yet the, the, the majority, of course. So uh, it's not a dominant uh, uh, portion. Uh, the largest impact, as we said, is of the road network. The question could be what will happen next? So what will happen, for example, once the road network will be completely mapped? Will they stop mapping at all? Will they move their interest to something else? Open question. Um, then another question is, is this really VGI? VGI meant as really volunteer geographic information. Then clearly VGI is now used for everything, even uh, uh, data that is not really volunteer voluntarily contributed, but uh, let's, let's, let's maybe try to, to say something more. So uh, it's clear that here we are not uh, uh, looking at, uh, uh, let's say, standard contributors. The motivation for contributing is, let's say, also and primarily economic. Of course, those editors might also not because they like it, because they enjoy it, but also because they are paid for that. Uh, on one side, this is, uh, or this should basically ensure that uh, high quality data validating data because in a way those those uh, uh, editors are trained to do that so they are kind of professionals in a way uh, so we have we should have a, a guarantee that the, the data is high quality data but they are also mapping with no local knowledge so and sometimes uh, no really relation with the local community so is this bringing biases in the map um, Biases for, for, for different reasons. So we, it might be also, uh, I mean, we might even speak about biases because the map maybe is too complete, is too good in a way in, in some areas, but uh, is too poor in the very adjacent areas. And uh, last question is how much are corporate editors sharing? So they are clearly contributing back data to OpenStreetMap, but uh, maybe is there anything uh, or how much that they are not sharing back with the community. So there are actually uh, uh, corporations like Amazon, also Facebook, they are sharing, uh, uh, and in, uh, let's say their own version of OpenStreetMap. So they are sharing in principle a, a, a version of the database that is more high quality because they run automated checks and so on. But uh, how much is there that they do not share? First step, and let me close with uh, uh, good news. First step is that in 2018, there was this document that was issued by the OpenStreetMap Foundation that is called Organized Editing Guidelines. This was a very, very important document that was issued in order to make sure that the mapping activity of those corporations is run in a transparent and in a meaningful way. Uh, so this is a set of guidelines, as, as the title says, that basically uh, try to um, explain how those activities uh, should be should happen. First of all, this is not only for corporations, this is for any kind of organized mapping. So even for humanitarian project, of course, as, as, as soon as they are, let's say, uh, really, they, they put together many people for a considerable amount of time. So not really for a mapping party when five, five or 10 people just meet together. This is for any organized editing activity. Uh, I encourage you to click the links uh, here and have a look. Um, there is also on the right, so there are two links on the left. Uh, this is the document on the right. Uh, you find the list of uh, activities or projects or really organized mapping activities. So uh, the organizations that have already, let's say, included themselves in this big table, uh, and they have to provide, according to these guidelines, some uh, information like a point of contact, like a description of what they are doing, a wiki page, um, and so on and so forth. One of, and with this I close, one of the recommendations is to always try to liaise, to agree, to be in touch with the local community, to make sure that if there is something going on, an import, uh, an organized mapping activity, a corporate mapping activity, the local community is involved, is aware uh, of the process. And with that, I close and I thank you very much for your attention. 
Thank you very much, Marco. It was really, really interesting and quite new for me. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, OK, so we have finished with the presentation and we can start uh, with the Q&A session. If there is somebody who wants to start to break the ice, just please uh, open up your mic and, and speak. Otherwise, uh, I will start <laughs> as before. Or you can even write on the chat if you don't want to talk and I can just say, ask Mark what you want to ask. But since mm, people are shy, <laughs> maybe I will start. If, if I and, can. Ah. Oh, sure, As sure, sure. Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, Marco. Hi. Long time no see. Uh, thank you for the great presentation. So, uh, I was aware of the Anderson paper before, and one thing uh, that uh, was related to what you said about uh, it, are those efforts really volunteer is um, are the motives now volunteerism? Basically, so if, for example, I'm a good volunteer, I'm uh, contributing to the pro project uh, all the time, May I be expecting that some of these companies will contact me and hire me to continue mapping for them? So um, is it really now, are we really now speaking about the volunteerism if, if they're paying for it? That's the first question. And the second question is, um, do you think that the OSM project would benefit in the future if it becomes decentralized in a way that, um, uh, not really decentralized, uh, but more uh, distributed, that servers are everywhere. I'm aware that companies are hosting the data to support different activities, but I mean the core servers um, redundant in, in different parts of the world. The, the database is growing uh, constantly. It is huge. You know, if, if you want to work with the, with the data sets, you will, you will need very good equipment to, to work even on, on a CDO level data, data set. So maybe something like that, which includes um, faculty, uh, faculties, uh, institutes, uh, I don't know, different institutions that would consider hosting web servers for parts of the world or the entire world. Maybe that would, uh, it, it was just occurring to me lately that it is growing so much that I'm not sure whether uh, one single foundation in one single place can can hold everything. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Nicola. And indeed, very nice to see you. Let me just open a parenthesis just before answering it. Uh, Nicola is also a great example of a community because we met, uh, I think, at some uh, uh, research event. Uh, uh, and then we wrote the papers together and then we physically met uh, when I visited uh, his country. And, and, and we are still here. So very, very nice. To, to, to see you here, especially after having said all those nice things about the community. To, to come to your uh, questions, well, uh, the first question is about the volun voluntarism uh, or the, 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 the whether we can actually call those contributions volunteered anymore. Uh, as, I, uh, as I said in my presentation, I don't think that the term VGI, and that was said also very much in the literature, is, 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 the, is, the, uh, is the right one. It, 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 if we mean uh, volunteered as uh, uh, a voluntary data, so data that is contributed voluntarily and uh, with the, uh, with the, with the, uh, consciously uh, in a way, uh, clearly we are here. Uh, we, if we speak about contributions, we are experiencing something new. This is why I always prefer to speak about crowdsourcing or uh, to define OSM as a crowdsourced uh, geospatial database because really crowdsourcing the the, the crowd, uh, I think. It gives uh, um, a, be a much better idea of uh, who can map. So basically everyone uh, uh, very, very much linked to his or her uh, own interest. And uh, again, in the crowd, uh, there are contributors like uh, us. They maybe we just want to add our uh, home to OpenStreetMap or uh, to map our uh, neighborhood. But there are also people who actually do that for completely different reasons, even for humanitarian purposes, which is a very different, uh, but uh, also uh, another uh, 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 important uh, uh, purpose uh, as well. So, uh, I mean, uh, maybe we should not use the term volunteer or we should use it 
but uh, with the awareness that this actually includes uh, a lot of different, uh, uh, first of all, people, interests, uh, organizations, uh, 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 and, and everything that actually um, comes uh, and derives from, from these, um, uh, in the good and in the bad. And uh, with this, I also link to the, to the second question that, uh, uh, well, it's, 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 so this is a difficult question, or it's not even a question, or it's, uh, so uh, what will be the future of OpenStreetMap? I think, uh, if everyone here in the call could say something about uh, how they would see the future of OpenStreetMap and what should change or what should not change, uh, we would probably hear, uh, uh, I'm not sure how many we are, but we, we would probably hear uh, several different uh, opinions. Um, uh, so on one side, uh, the, the freedom of the project is exactly, uh, it mean, it is, is, a, is an interesting intrinsic part of the project itself. So freedom in terms of who can contribute to where, uh, how, what can be contributed. Um, uh, edits in OpenStreetMap are not checked. They, they, they are part of the database. Uh, um, what should change? So should, for example, each edit be controlled? Uh, maybe yes, maybe no. I, I don't think so because the, it's part of the project. Uh, who should host the infrastructure? That's a good uh, question. I mean, the foundation is currently hosting the infrastructure, and I think they are doing a great job in doing that. And it's very important, as I said, that uh, the project uh, remains sustainable over the long, uh, in the long time. So not in the in the next couple of years, but it's very important that the project becomes and stays uh, sustainable. Um, it's clearly important, and I'm I'm working uh, I'm working for the European Commission, so uh, we are uh, experiencing also cases where God governments and national mapping agencies are looking with a lot of interest to OpenStreetMap to actually um, really a, a, a use the data sets in their everyday mapping processes or to update, as I said, to complement uh, their, uh, their data sets and their processes. Um, is that a good choice for them? Probably it, it is a sustainable one also for them, uh, as I said. So, you know, it's, it's always difficult to take conclusions on OpenStreetMap on what it should become what it should not become. What I can say is that uh, it's an open project. Uh, everyone can contribute, but also everyone can benefit from the data uh, in the good or in the bad. I mean, with the good uh, intentions or with bad intentions, with the uh, economical uh, the reasons and motivations and interest or with uh, uh, very, uh, let's say, noble uh, interest like the humanitarian ones where uh, I think many of us uh, have been involved uh, in the past. So, uh, um, uh, I hope I gave my two cents to the discussion more than really answering and providing a solution. And I see Arnali uh, raised uh, her hand. Uh, yes, please, Arnali, go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Thank. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Marco. That that that's actually related to my question as well. But yeah, just also sharing maybe my perspective or that you can also challenge. Yeah, I think VGI. I, I've seen it most in academic papers. And so I really like the term using crowdsource rather than VGI. And I think uh, for a platform like OpenStreetMap, a free and open uh, source map of the world, uh, it's not just the motivation. It's just, it, it's not only like if you, uh, if you are motivated for a good or bad intention or, or, or uh, contributing uh, to volunteer or to or is paying it was uh, it is also a matter of means especially if you want to increase local knowledge I, I came from a, um, a low income country the Philippines and so uh, this I, I'm glad that you also shared on your presentation that uh, corporate mapping or paid editing um, provides econ uh, uh, give a benefit uh, in economical terms because yeah I think in a individual perspective having me having a motivation to contribute in OpenStreetMap having the local knowledge but I don't have the means I don't have the tools or yeah I don't have the time because I'm work I'm also working I'm a mother and yeah I think yeah I think um something like paid mapping or uh, paid editing in OpenStreetMap should not be as uh, seen as uh, 
maybe as destructive or as a demon because it it, it actually benefits uh, people uh, especially if you want local knowledge there's a paper from uh, there's an article from martin ditos uh, on wikipedia that they there's an africa there uh, in wikipedia it's like the osm that it's it's crowdsourced and so we want in wikipedia they want to increase local knowledge but then um there uh, in that article, uh, one of one African or yes, a member in the African community said that uh, they can't, they won't be able to contribute their local knowledge because they just don't have the privilege of time and resources to do so, and so they, they, uh, they, uh, they are trying to reconsider. Uh, paying editor so that we can make uh, Wikipedia uh, more local knowledge. I think this is also like an ongoing, um, ongoing conversation as well with uh, with the OpenStreetMap being a crowdsource. And I think for the corporate mappers or for the co corporate editing, I think it will be a good uh, a good practice that uh, if they are having like a, a project on a certain countries, is that they they hire or yeah they pay editors or pay uh their staff that who are you know who are uh local in that area in that country so that because these people are also um stewards i believe of their countries and their land and so yeah they they will care about the map and uh, yeah although they are paid uh, i think there will be like an increase in awareness that uh, this is something that you know they can steward since this is their own land and uh, this is, and uh, the last one is yeah the the question on colonialism since I know we know that corporate mappers are or corporate uh, corporate organizations mostly come from uh, from first world countries and so yeah I think one of the things to like. Um, break that uh, colonialism issue is yeah to consult with the community if this is something that is needed uh, or that is beneficial for them and if this is something that they are needed and yeah there there, there is it is also a continuing conversation that uh, data and yeah maps geographic information is crucial in uh, government or uh, yeah in, in government sector to uh to to um consider how how they make decisions but yeah this is something that is lacking in i can say that is lacking in low income countries in the philippines that's why their this the government decisions are not uh, data driven it's yeah it's more of political so yeah it's also a uh, an uh continuous conversation and also an advocacy to uh, promote uh, open data or yeah, data-driven uh, decision-making. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Arnali. Thank you. I don't know, given that we don't have much time, Allegra, uh, over Yeah, to... actually, I wanted to... Yeah, thank you, Marco. <laughs> and I um, wanted to... I have a question. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Um, sorry, I interrupted. <laughs> no, 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 um, no, no. It's, it's fine. Take me go, some go time ahead. to process. <laughs> um, Thank you so much, Michael, and thanks to the previous presenter, um, Selene. Um, I think I relate so much to all that has been presented. Um, mine is kind of uh, been a challenge uh, since I became an OpenStreetMap contributor. Um, I have passion in making sure that there is um, equitable service delivery and um, development at large, um, where I come from, my low income country, Uganda. Um, and I have been following Marco for quite a period since Polymappers, and um, you've been doing such an amazing work um, in the field of driving um, geospatial data, OSM, in, in government business in European Union. I know you're under the Joint Research Center. So um, here for me is just for you to share your experience. I mean, um, on the African continent, um, or in most of the messages that are driven there, is that um, we need to close the gap. We need to 
do capacity building. The information is available, the data is available and it can be developed, but we need to provide capacity. And I think we've done a lot of this over the years, decades and decades capacity is being built, but I mean, there is not like um, that energy or um, forward movement to actually adopt um, um, some of these tools and some of these technologies and techniques into government business. So I was wondering maybe if you could share um, a bit of your experience of how it has been for you um, to participate within the European Union and make sure that um, geospatial um, information or geospatial capacity is utilized um, on the European continent. Uh, to help drive, um, it would bring more uh, awareness uh, <laughs> into some of the questions that sit in my head, but also as a youth mapper's uh, regional ambassador, um, these are some of the messages that I tend to drive to, pro to prompt more contribution of young people who are in school and certainly, like Anali said, see no value for this because our governments are not certainly very democratic and they would probably have suspicions of such environments. So how do we make it equitable and very reliable information for them to adopt? Thanks, thanks a lot for this uh, uh, interesting, uh, uh, for sharing this interesting perspective. Uh, what I can quickly, I think because we are running out of time, but I can quickly say something about my, my experience. So basically well, when I moved from the university uh, to uh, a big, big, uh, a governmental organization like the European Commission, of course, the, 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 the type of organization is completely different. Uh, uh, still, uh, I believe capacity building is one of the most important things. And uh, we, we saw it with polymappers, with youth mappers. I think uh, you, you could probably share as many things as me or even more uh, than me about how much uh, youth mappers and how much the network uh, and how much uh, uh, hot uh, the humanitarian and OpenStreetMap team and related uh, uh, humanitarian organizations are contributing to, uh, to um, building capacity. Um, and that's, I think, very, very important because I, I still remember that the, the mission of Youth Mappers is really to, uh, to form the next generation of mappers. So to really train people, to uh, make people aware uh, and, and, and to become, uh, let's say, uh, the, the mappers, but let's say responsible mappers in the, in the future future. Um, go, uh, the European level, uh, clearly, um, what I have personally done is, uh, well, you know, you should think to a, a kind of a very different organization compared to the university uh, with a lot, a lot of rules and uh, um, uh, on everything. So including on, on, on data, on geospatial data, and uh, we have our official uh, products from the commission. Uh, what I can say, and I am uh, I'm very uh, happy to, to share that is that the European Commission for its official uh, uh, map products is employing uh, OpenStreetMap. We are using our, let's say, own version of OpenStreetMap. So you might find some base maps uh, um, um, online. It's basically OpenStreetMap, but it's, uh, let's say, changed or it's uh, it might be slightly different in some parts of the world because it reflects the European uh, Commission position, for example, on the disputed areas. So when there are disputed borders, for example, between two countries, in the map, you can see what is the position of the European Commission. So this is basically a use, the main use of the data uh, that that is done by the OpenStreetMap data that is done by the commission. I'm personally, uh, I have personally, uh, as you can uh, guess, uh, uh, gave, uh, given a lot of uh, training on OpenStreetMap because uh, many people are simply not aware that, that, that it exists, that, uh, that everyone can contribute and that this can become actually a good source of data for uh, for everyone. Uh, we are, of course, and specifically for, for, my, uh, for my job where we try to build a European uh, Union spatial data infrastructure with the Inspire uh, uh, project. Uh, Inspire is basically a very well-known directive, but I will not enter the details. So we are closely in contact with the European national mapping agencies. And we know that many of them, of course, situation is quite different, but many of them have tried in the past, are trying, or are already trying to use OpenStreetMap. There are national mapping agencies that uh, uh, work very closely with the local communities that uh, have imported a lot of data sets into OpenStreetMap that are 
using or are exploring the use of OpenStreetMap for their uh, really to, 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 to complement uh, potentially their, uh, their data sets. Um, this is something that we are exploring. Of course, there are issues, there are enablers and there are barriers. And this is what we are, I am, current, I am currently exploring in a research project uh, where we, uh, we are trying to see how data sets that are standardized according to, let's say, European, uh, 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 let's say, rules or protocols or standards can be integrated with OpenStreetMap, not just in terms of the semantics, uh, but also in terms, of, for example, of uh, um, the legal uh, uh, side of the of the of the story. And uh, for example, the OpenStreetMap license often is an obstacle for uh, integration with authoritative data sets. I don't want to enter the the, uh, the 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 topic of the license and on the compliance and the ease of integration of different licenses. But this is also another topic that uh, might be really investigated in another talk, uh, maybe. So it's in a nutshell, and sorry for being so long, uh, there are opportunities. There is much uh, still to do. Um, and I'm, I'm doing my part as, a, as an OpenStreetMap supporter, as I've uh, always been done in the past. And thanks a lot for your nice words um, on me. Thank you, thank you, Marco, and thank. Okay, um, thank you, Arnali, and thank you, everybody who had made questions. Actually, I just wanted to ask a really quick question to Anissa, since uh, I know that she is in charge, uh, among other things, <laughs> um, about on the like community engagement. Is that correct? <laughs> and so um, I was wondering how. I mean. Uh, I am a very new user and um, a knower of the, the OpenStreetMap project. And I have approached to the project because I thought that it could be useful in some way for my university research, I mean, for my PhD research. Is it possible to make like direct, is it possible, I mean, let's imagine that I need some data about, about a place in the world. I know that there is a community uh, of OpenStreetMap there, and I I see that there are some missing data or that I would need data, data in different ways. Or is it possible somehow to make a direct question to the community to connect to the foundation and directly asking for the uh, provision of that data somehow, or is it? Or does it have to be done through the connection with the community? And so, like, just like, is there a protocol? Is it uh, is it allowed by the community, or uh, can we can we directly ask things like that? So um, the idea is that thank you very much for the question. I'll try to be quick because I know we are running late. And <laughs> yeah, <but> yeah, <laughs> I don't over. Uh, so the idea is that um, in OpenStreetMap, as we have already said, uh, lots of times now everyone can contribute. And for example, if you'd like to have something on the map, of course, you can totally edit by yourself. And if you would like, for example, to not edit by yourself, you can put notes on, notes on the map and, for example, just yes. give the community a this information can, can be added here. There are also the ways that you can connect and communicate to, the, to, to, to different communities. For example, in Italy, there is a national mailing list. Mailing lists are these public uh, emails where everyone can be subscribed and see everything that goes through. And for example, for Italy, there is a national one, and then there are small regional mailing lists where you can, of course, connect to the community, to the contributors that are active in a specific area. And um, the thing is that you can, of course, um, connect and talk and ask things there, but you cannot really expect uh, from people who are volunteers to add something that you want. They maybe can do it, but of course they are volunteers. You can't really ask for it to be added by the and expect it to be added by default. Um, and the foundation, um, on the other hand, doesn't really control what's being mapped. So 
the foundation would be um, contacted in cases of conflicts because some of the working groups, specifically the data working group, would take care of uh, specific conflicts about about um, country borders, uh, for example. But in cases that information that you want to be in the map is not on, on the database or for the map, you can edit yourself or you can probably just uh, give a hint to the community by um, uh, some notes that are very simple to, to, to add on the map. And they can might be added at, at some point but learning is very easy. So I really encourage people who see that information is miss missing on the map to, to, to give it a try and edit, edit themselves. So asking is always permitting. And if you get in contact with the community, it's probably the best way to have access to the and to contribute to the data. Even, I mean, I was thinking about, I was not thinking about Italy. Actually, I was thinking about data of other part of the world we, who, where it may be more difficult to reach the community, but actually what we see is that uh, it is not that difficult. <laughs> and that uh, since it is all based on the community, it's also quite easy to reach them, no? <laughs> yeah. And the community is really active uh, on responding. And it's a, a part of the mailing lists that are in many, many countries of the world. Uh, there are also forums, uh, for example, help.openstreet uh, map.org, I think, uh, where you can find all kinds of information questions and also the wiki, yep. uh, which is a Wikipedia. Uh, it's a, a whole container full of information about anything related to OpenStreetMap, uh, where can be found almost every, uh, every kind of information. And yeah, th this would be the, the main kind of um, pages that, that people can go and look for information. Okay, thank you very much. I may, uh, yeah, go. May I add to the question? Sure. There is something called reviews. I was researching it. I have a paper with my colleagues about it. So potentially you would be able to draw what you need, well, to map what you need, and then ask for a review on OSM chart. And someone with the local knowledge would be able to review it and maybe uh, give you textual uh, explanation what you should be should add or maybe even they would be able to uh, map it on top of whatever you have mapped. So if you, I, I understand that your question was that you need someone with the local knowledge from the, from the, from the place where you want to map something, with, where something is missing. This, this would be a way that I'm aware of, potential way uh, to approach it. But not, not that I, was, I wasn't thinking about uh, mobile applications that are suggesting <laughs> uh, volunteers, things like that, with my previous research. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I, we are running out of time, actually, so I'm really sorry, but I have to... Um, close down the conversation here. I really thank you all of you who joined, all the people who made questions, and I, I really thank you, my speakers. <laughs> it was very interesting, and I hope we are making some people more curious about the OpenStreetMap project and what you can do with the open data and open geographical data. Just uh, a quick reminder about next week's talk uh, that we'll talk about, as we said, informal setting, informal house, uh, housing and its uh, relation with legislation held by Lorenzo Mauloni with Francesco Chiodelli and... Uh, um, sorry, I forgot about the second speaker. Um, Emiliano Esposito, sorry for this. Uh, and also I wanted to say to, if there are any students of the Politecnico who are interested in starting a Politecnico community or starting to uh, map with OpenStreetMap, please contact me because we are going to create a group. So you can contact me through the email that uh, you can answer to the Eventbrite email or you can, you can contact me on, through the Facebook page. So thank you very much, all of you. Thank you for being here. It was really interesting. And um, let's meet up in the next meeting. <laughs> thank you. Thank, Thank you, Alexa. Thank you for being such Thank a great one. Thank you very much.
Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.